Hello. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Carolina Pang from Kyoto Live. And it is very, very late here. It's 12.09 after midnight. So it's uh, in the a.m. It's 8.09 a.m. in Los Angeles or California, which is home is. And so 11.09 in the East Coast. How are you ladies? It's been probably around two months since the last time uh, I, uh, I broadcast live, right? And by the way, everyone's asleep here, so probably I have to, you know, keep my voice down a little bit. And ladies, welcome to uh, the live class, if you can. May I ask you for a favor, please? Like or love or forward this um, live video so your friends, your loved ones, maybe your sisters, your family members can also listen to this class because, you know, hey, you know, you might change lives, right? So uh, I'm also I'm going to forward this to the group and my timeline. Anyway, um, this is my like fifth or sixth day in, in Kyoto and um, I'll be going, I'll be flying to Jakarta on the day after tomorrow. So tomorrow is our last day here and we're gonna probably um, uh, visit the Universal Studio in Osaka, so it will be exciting. And, you know, it's been a, a very interesting trip so far. Um, I love Japan. Uh, Japanese people are very nice, uh, very cultured, very polite, very service oriented. So it always impress, impresses me whenever I come here. This is my second time, by the way. The last time uh, we visited Tokyo. If you remember, I also uh, broadcast live from Tokyo, I'm talking about marriage. So you, you might want to look the list of my videos on the video section of my page or my personal account. Um, okay, so let me just forward this to the groups that I have. Anyway, as usual, ladies, whenever I came back after, you know, a few weeks or a few months, there's always good news, right? <laughs> the last time probably we were, I don't know, um, uh, we were at engagement number 11 this year. Um, two months later, we are now at number 17. Wow. So 14, 15, 16, 17, the last two months. One of them said that, you know, she hasn't got the ring yet, but they've, they've talked about it. So I'm very happy for you ladies, as usual. This is um, my salute for you guys. Hopefully you have a happily ever after uh, marriage, right? Um, if it doesn't go happily ever after, that's fine too, because you, you know, it's never a relationship or a marriage loss, because you always grow after the end of, uh, one relationship or every relationship, you know, so you learn a lot, you heal a lot of stuff, right? Because that is pretty much the purpose of, of relationship is to, to bring, to bring up this, to the surface, all these uh, unhealed wounds or unresolved issues. Anyway, we have already some ladies uh, join us. There is Yasmin, there is Rami, there is Lina, there is Linda, Rachel. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. It's early there um, in the US. But today, I would like to talk about something that is probably not touched very often in the relationship or dating niche, right? As you probably um, begin to surmise, my style uh, of coaching is so different, so totally different from the rest. Um, I 
I focus so much on inner work. I focus so much on uh, the main uh, star of every relationship, which is yourself, right? So your focus shouldn't be outward, but inward. Because when your focus is inward, you begin to expand your awareness. And as your awareness expands, you become more functional. You become uh, happier. You become less anxious. You become uh, more able to put yourself in your partner's shoes or in other people's shoes in general. So you become less and less reactive. And as the result of being more whole, being more uh, well-rounded and of course your relationship will improve so that is the premise I've been operating on that has been proven to work like a charm like magic nobody else or or you don't hear the kind of success that I produce day in day out anywhere else in the world uh, might sound very uh, like uh, bragging but that is the truth uh, I'm I don't brag I just say something that I know it deep in my heart to be to be fact, to be the truth. Okay, so and I would like also to announce that um, you know I have I'm postponing the retreat from uh, May second to the sixth to the Labor Day weekend, which is which going to fall on August thirtieth throughout um, September the third. So, ladies, I would like to meet you. So, please come to my beautiful home in uh, San Diego County. And we will learn so much. Uh, everything that I talk about in every blog post, in every comment, and uh, Facebook stat, uh, uh, status updates, or this live video, live, face-to-face, -face, in the comfort of my living room, or the beautiful um, outdoor areas. Around, around the house and we still have the early bird special so please hurry in the early bird special if you take the, the entire length of the retreat I'm, I'm just going to also sweeten the deal by giving you uh, some free programs uh, valued at over $500 so this is really cheap you know for the results that I produce um, I really don't charge that much <laughs> Because most of you got the relationship you want, got your access back, um, or improve your relationship, save your marriage by spending less than two hundred dollars. It's not like oh, ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars. If you want to work with me on one on one, I can never do that to you guys because I hold the secret. I know all the secrets to happiness, and it will be very selfish of me to just keep it to myself. I want every one of you to succeed, no matter whether or not you have money, whether or not you spend any dime on me. It doesn't matter. I'm happy uh, anyway if you succeed, you know, because you follow my teachings, because you do what I teach you. Okay, that is my number one concern. Of course I love money. Who doesn't, right? The money allows me to travel. The money allows me to have the... Uh, freedom lifestyle that I'm living right now even though I'm you know technically on vacation but it is pretty much just changing office all over the world right just for um, like variety and I think I just love it I love to travel and uh, I have my parents here I have my BFF here and her son and they're all asleep so <laughs> all right so I will just start by reading a, a, a few questions from you ladies and then somehow connect those questions to the very topic that I'm going to talk about, which is about surrender, right? Um, so how to surrender to the moment and how this actually can help your guy or your EUM or your partner to connect with you on a deeper level, or to connect with you emotionally. 
Don't you always have this question in your head? Don't you always wonder how to make my man, you know, love me more or fall in love with me more, right? So let me read one question first from Erin here. Erin asked me a question. And if you have a question, please also just write it on the comment section. Uh, we see in mirroring in relationship. How do we deal with habits that drive us bonkers in a goddess manner? For example, becoming lackadaisical in relationship or complacency, complacency, constant social um, media browsing during time together. This is a huge disconnect for me. And it seems especially bad with younger people, even if in five years, age difference. I know it's not my business, but with that said, my time is sparse. It's important to me. And I chose who I spend it with wisely. I do not acquire a ton of attention whatsoever, yet it can be obnoxious. Accept or reject, I realize that. I have not downgraded, but definitely in the midst of failing back for sanity. For sanity. These are small things within the big picture. Just trying my best to be chillax in the moment and honey, but sometimes it is trying. And on that note, I am putting a big heartfelt hug, hug into the universe for you. Oh, thank you, Erin. My relationship with the world has changed, not just with men. My mind, soul, and heart has changed so tremendously from the time I found you. I could not be more grateful. I have done so, so much hard work and many other things, but you helped me save that pivot. I was broken in many ways and on the cusp of brain surgery to boot. I'm sorry about that, Arian. I'm so happy for the struggle because now I am here, whole and happy, with confidence that never was. You are a gift to us all. Sorry for the cheese. Ha. Ah. Thank you so much for your kind words and um, the best of luck for your brain surgery. Uh, I know it's scary. Try to be just surrender, just the name of the cross, to surrender. Now, uh, regarding your question, how to mirror a guy? Um, presumably, right, if I assume correctly, this guy is not your boyfriend, of Obviously, right? He, he is probably the EUM or one of the guys you date. And, you know, I know it is very kind of insulting when a guy is with you. He's checking on the phone, right? Um, uh, so, what should you do to mirror? Well, if he's on the phone, you can also be on the phone. I know it sounds fair, kind of silly, you know, tit for tat. But, um, you know, um, this is not like a fixed rule, obviously. You know, I'm, I'm not the sort of person who believes in rules. If you have followed me, I'm, I'm a renegade. I'm a rebel. <laughs> you know, I don't follow the crowd. I do whatever I want, moment to moment. I'm very true to myself, true to my feelings. Okay, so uh, this is just a very sort of general uh, rule so mirroring so if he is uh, probably busy on the phone meaning he's distracted you know you can try probably just give him the taste of his own medicine because that is the language a guy understands talking to a guy you know most of the time is just like talking to a brick wall a guy will understand when he is experiencing the very thing he inflicts on you. That's why the, method, the methods that I teach involve very little talking. No feeling messages, no that nonsense, okay? Um, no sort of like telling a guy what to do, what you need, no. Your focus should be just on, you, on yourself feeling your emotional tank 
and be happy being you. So focus on doing you. Okay. So he's busy with his cell phone. You're just like doing it, you know, just the same. And trust me, the minute you are seems also like very engrossed in whatever it, uh, you know you're doing with, with the cell phone, he begins want to your attention. Okay, that is how you deal with guys, not with your mouth. Zip your mouth. Most of the time, zip it. If you have come to the place of equanimity, if you have come to the place in which you have done your inner work, you always know what to do. So even the, in the moment you want to talk, you want to express yourself, you will be fine with it. I always say that, you know, I never restrain myself. If in the moment I feel I want to talk, uh, you know, I will just talk. It's not a problem for me. If the, in the moment I want to be feisty, I will be feisty. But the difference between me and you is I never question myself. I never go back and forth, back and forth, questioning myself and then feeling sorry. And then I get anxious, right? And then I apologize, this and that. No, because I always surrender to who I am moment to moment. I'm always okay with what I do moment to moment. I don't apologize. Of course, if I make a mistake, you know, a misjudgment, I have no problem apologizing, but this is not something that, you know, uh, this is not what I'm talking about, you know. So, but to start with, because you're still learning, yeah, you still need learning the teachings, the method, just mirror the guy. I know you feel probably kind of weird about it, but try just to sit with the feeling, see where it leads. Okay, learn new things, discover new things about yourself along the way. This is why my stuff, my stuff is so life-changing because you're, you'll be challenged just to observe yourself moment to moment, whatever you do. Okay, in the beginning, it probably feels like, a, like it's a rule, right? But, it, you know, Throughout your journey, you will modify yourself according to your own uh, needs and preference and to your own liking and feeling moment to moment. You begin to be uh, able to be more in tune with your feelings. Because a lot of you, when you say feelings, they are just like the, the byproduct of the byproducts of unskillful thinking. That's what the feelings you're talking about. That's why you come up with this, I feel this, I feel that, just to show a guy that, you know, I want you to do this for me so I am happy. That's basically what you, you, you're telling him, right? Instead of just sit with the feeling and just process it, you know, and be curious what might lead from that feelings that you, you are not uh, acting upon. Okay, that is how you learn. So do not be afraid to learn. Do not be afraid, afraid to, uh, to explore within yourself what you're capable of. Okay, and if you um, sign up for my journey inward, you will learn how to deal with the thoughts that, that come up very often, this, uh, these nasty uh, voices in your head, the gremlins in your head telling you all this like uh, maddening stuff that you just want to act on, right? This is why a lot of you came to me because you don't know what to do with those nasty thoughts other than always uh, expressing yourself or acting on them. Okay, so in, with me, if you uh, come to me, you'll be taught or I'll be teaching you new ways of dealing with your feelings or new ways of dealing with your emotions or your thoughts, right? So you become a more um, measured person in your response. 
Okay, so um, I hope that answers your, your questions, Erin. So just surrender. Surrender that you're feeling probably slighted. Sit with that feeling. Surrender that you're not feeling that great, that he is so distracted. You know, if you feel that, you know, I have to say something about it because this is just so chronic and you don't care if you going to see him again or not, you can just say, hey, maybe, you know, uh, we can just get together when you are more focused or when you're less distracted because I think right now you, you're busy with something else and I don't want to take your time. Uh, you know, if you have something more important to do, yeah, we can we can do this some other time. I don't mind. You know, so just very matter of fact, but also very reasonable about it. And see how it goes. So you see, there is no rule. Yes, you can mirror, but also if you feel that it's right for you to speak up, then you can speak up like that without the drama, without the tantrum. Okay. So here, yeah, thank you, Erin, for the question. This is another question from um, Amy. Here's my question, Kat. After a man breaks up with you, he says because he doesn't feel romantically attracted anymore. But after the breakup, after no contact for about three weeks or so, oops, sorry, he now initiates contact regularly and ask to go to dinner or just hang out watching TV like we used to. No sex between us, but a lot of chemistry and laughs. Is it possible he could feel attracted again or are is his actions because he truly only wants me as a friend? He said he isn't dating. Amy, one thing is clear about a man. The number one thing that is so important for a man is his time. He won't spend any minute with a woman he doesn't like. Yeah, maybe for sex, you know, he probably do it once or twice, right? If he, he just go, goes for the sex. And usually it expires after the first or second time. You know, if he's not that into you, if he just after sex, he wouldn't be coming back week after week, month after month. It's not possible, okay? So a guy has to be into you to spend any amount of time with you, a lot of time especially. He has to like you. So the fact that he said he wasn't feeling romantically attracted to you because maybe because you were pushy or you were, you were uh, leading, you were trying to move the relationship forward, you initiate it a lot, you lean forward a lot, you bring the talk a lot, you talk in general a lot. That is the polarizing relationship because now the guy feels that your energy is too forward. And if he's a masculine energy guy, you know, the forward mass, the forward energy feels like a collision with, with his energy. And for uh, for reason that he cannot explain himself, this is something. This is not something a guy conscious most of the time. He just kind of feeling not attracted enough toward you. But then when he takes a break and you lean back, you don't try to question him. You don't try to contact him. After three weeks, he feels you know there is enough space to miss you again. And remember, guys fall in love in your absence. So when he's not, when he hasn't heard from you for three weeks, he begins to think, hey, what's going on with Amy? I haven't heard from her. It's unusual. Usually by now, he's, she's been probably, she has been contacting me for, you know, at least 5,000 times, right? <laughs> now I haven't heard a peep since three weeks ago. And I'm kind of, wondering what's going on like you know did he did she did she lose interest or did she find someone somebody new uh, you know she's kind of cute and i like her 
well, let me just, you know, uh, shoot a text real quick sort of thing. You see, that is the process that a guy is going through. But if you're always in, in his face, you've always been at his door, he, has, he doesn't have a chance to miss you. So it's very important to be the woman in this whole process. Okay? So let him come to you. And because guys will take their sweet ass time, it's very hard for you to just see a guy at a time. You know, it would be too, too much time lapse with you just sitting and waiting around for him to call you or to, to text you. So it's very important for you to have a solid rotation. Okay, so out of sight, out of mind. But when you're together, you build memories. You create uh, a connection. You surrender to the moment. You just be. Okay, you connect to your heart, to your body, and get out of your head. That is how you surrender to the moment. You're not surrendering when you're busy in your head, trying to gauge his interest, trying to evaluate what he means when he does this, when he says that, worrying whether or not you know, he, he's liking you enough, worrying whether or not he will call you, after tonight, whether or not he will want to see you again. If you're so busy in your head like that, you're not surrendering to the moment. Okay? So, yes, the answer is, after no contact, he begins to feel the polar polarity again, the polarization again. Oh, you know, I'm missing her. So, you know, so keep it up, all right? All right, let's see another question. This is from Donna Villa. How to talk less, care less, and not murdering him and overinvested with a guy who also invests in you and work out a relationship with a thrust issue and a complicated and Tricky relationship with a long-term boyfriend and work out a relationship with a trust issue and a complicated and tricky relationship with a long-term boyfriend. Don't know, Fila, how to talk less? Just talk less. Just zip it, zip it. How to care less? Get out of the head and not moderate him. Sit down, sit back and relax and be receptive. Do nothing. Be passive. It's very easy. Okay, if you just be passive, you're not going to be overinvested. And if he's already investing in you, what's, what, 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 what's the need to lean forward at all? He's already doing the job. So your job is to be responsive and to be receptive. So I don't understand many of you. A guy pursues you and he, you pursue him back. Why? You know, you disturb the chase now. You disturb the pursuit. You know, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So he's pursuing you. He's stepping up. You just be gracious about it. Enjoy it. Be passive. Okay? So it's very easy. Do not, do not overthink this. Let's see some other questions. This is from Isabella. How can a guy go from falling in love with you, buying gifts and wanting to be in a relationship to saying it was all a, a lie, but we can still be friends in a matter of days? You know what? When a guy says oh, it was all a lie, okay. Just say, okay, thank you, and bye-bye, all right? So do not overanalyze anything. See how it goes. I bet, you know, he'll be running back toward you with, 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 his, with a tail, uh, you know, between his legs within days or weeks. But then again, you're not going to 
just trust a man until I mean not going to put all your eggs in one basket until he earns it until he shows it you know through his actions that he just really wants you for himself so continue your rotation okay through the rotation you know a lot of uh, guys will uh, fall off the pond you know the, the frogs will leap out of the pond and if some others will will stay in the pond so you know focus on those who who stay in the pond do not chase that's why it's very important for you so to be very grounded in your mind stop fantasizing stop aiming for a guy okay do not aiming for aiming for a guy is choosing a guy first is aiming for a guy right for example you know oh i'm so attracted to him uh, to this particular guy in my in my rotation and i want him a lot of women come to me but i want him that comes from a very masculine energy i want him well, as a woman your job is to observe which one of these guys deserve you know your uh, your attention your fa your affection and your your loyalty that is not based on looks that is not based on who you like the most but based on who steps up the most who appreciates and cherishes you the most because in the end of the day as a woman we want a guy who cherishes us we don't want a guy we need to fix but a lot of you want to fix guys you want the fixer uppers you know it doesn't work that way with guys don't 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 take the path of the most resistance choosing a guy based on looks based on sex is the path of the most resistance i understand it's very important you know to have great sex but if he is not present with you if he, he never really um you know takes you out he never really invests in you other than just the great sex then you know you don't want to be hung up on him because it's going to be very difficult for you to undo all the over investment over time and the over investment coming from aiming for a guy choosing a guy first in your head no the choosing first comes from a guy but in the end you're gonna do the choosing from the guys who choose you if you do it my way there will be more than just one guy who wants to be with you and out of those guys who love you who take care of you who want to be with you now you have a goddess problem because now you have to choose just only one that is what uh, the kind of problem cat ladies have not the pining the chasing the unrequited love all that nonsense that doesn't happen you know with with cat with cat ladies cat ladies always in the end always in a position to choose the guys not at first because women don't choose at first you know if, if some some people some coaches say oh women choose first no they're lying they don't they don't know what they're talking about always guys choose first and you respond and you do the basically the screening of those guys who choose you you screen the best who are, who is the best right okay isabella let's see now from janet how do you treat a guy who ghosted what do we exactly do when they come back depends what you mean by ghosting you know in the in the beginning please do not expect that guys will be always you know pursuing 24 7. he will take a break from time to time yeah uh you know there are some exceptions to the rule of course you know there are guys who are very uh very sure even from the get-go like joey for example you know he he never liked to uh 
like a long time, you know, to come back and pursue. Yeah, there was one time, I think it was about five days. That was, but pretty much he is very consistent from the get go and he's, you know, pursuing very, you know, consistently, very obviously that he is, he, he, he wants more. So, but for the most part, do not expect it because these days, maybe not just these days, but ever, most guys really going to take their time, you know, because this is not something guys take lightly. Commitment is something huge for a guy. Because remember, he is responsible for your happiness. That's at least in his mind. I am responsible for this woman. I'm, you know, I want to, I, he has to lead the relationship. He has to be responsible for another basically human being. And that, that's number one. Number two, then he will have to stop chasing skirts. He will have to stop, stop, you know, having sex with other women. That, that is huge for any guy, even though those who probably don't have sex all that much, <laughs> who don't have that many options, but some, somehow, you know, in their imaginations, you know, wow, this is it. Commitment meaning, wow, this is it. I'm not going to have another pussy <laughs> anymore in my life. And of course, it is scary. So understand that about a guy. So when you understand, you stop expecting a guy to always pursue you 24-7. Yeah, he's been pursuing hard the first few weeks. But always be in the moment. That is what, what I mean by surrendering to the moment. You know, maybe today you're not going to hear from him and be okay with it. So sometimes he will rubber band, right? He will pull away, say, for a week. And I wouldn't consider that ghosting because most of the time, guys, if, he, if they like you, they'll take a break and they'll come back. But the problem is you, you, you get all butt hurt, right? You want to lash out. You, you feel slighted because where have you been? Well, how come you didn't talk to me at all for the whole week or two weeks? Okay. Do not... If you, that's why it's so important to have a solid rotation because when, when guys disappear for a while, you'll be busy with, with the other guys on your rotations. You won't even notice. And when he comes back, your energy will be still high because you've got all the emotional, uh, you've got your emotional needs fulfilled by the guys in your rotation. So you're not going to be sour when he's back and you're just going to be happy. Hey, you know, so nice to hear from you again. Uh, how are you? So there is no jadedness in, in you. Now, ghosting, if it's probably more than, uh, more than two months or a month, let's say a month, more than a month, and then they come back, if you're not invested, it doesn't really matter, right? So you just be cool about it. But if you feel that, he, you know, he's been pursuing very hard and, he, you know, he, he's courting you and you don't hear from him for two months and then he comes back, I understand you might feel a little bit weird, like, you know, a little bit dis disconnect. So how do you deal with it? How you deal with it is depending how you feel in the moment. Okay, if you feel that, you know, you're not that impressed that he just comes back and act as if there, you know, nothing happens, you know, you just be some, somewhat quiet about it, somewhat aloof. I don't teach you to be so blatantly like telling a guy, you know, I'm not happy, I'm not impressed that you didn't, you just ghosted on me for two months. Because, you know, guys don't respond to, to words like I say. Guys respond to aloofness, to distance. That is a woman's uh, weapon, to be quiet, to be distant, to be just less enthusiastic. A guy knows when you're just quiet and you're just not, uh, you know, your, your old chirpy self, that you're not terribly happy, but you're not going to cause drama either. Okay, so you just kind of restrain, reserve, and you kind of like, waiting to see what he's going to do. And so you're giving the ball on 
leaving the ball on his court. So it's up to him how to handle it. That's how you do it as a woman. Okay, this is the kind of advice you don't get anywhere else, ladies. So stick with me. <laughs> All right. So thank you for the questions. Um, let's see. Uh, from this is from Amal. Just uh, to repose. How do you maintain your magnetism when you are in a long distance relationship? And when things are difficult, especially while long distance, I'm all. Surrender. Surrender. As a woman, you don't have to do anything. That's the beauty of my teachings. You really don't have to do anything. Long distance, short distance. Just be. Just be. Let him come to you. Let him lead. That is how you become magnetic. Okay? It's, it's very easy. And... It's also from Amal, and this too. I finally dropped my stories, and after a bit of drama, things are well. Now he asked, now he asked me, babe, why were we fighting? He wants to talk about the fights now, that I'm finally over the drama. I don't want to tell him because you emotionally more avoidant than me. But I also don't know if I even want, even want to engage. Now that I finally moved on, he wants to talk. Is this a trap? Um, if you don't want to talk about it, you just say, um, Han, let's just move on. I don't want to talk about it. I've already forgotten about it. You know, uh, I'm sorry if I was too emotional, but right now, really, I, I don't even remember why I was emotional. So let's just move on, shall we? <laughs> right? Just talk less. Talk less about problems. Seriously. So you don't need to engage. Unless that he really insists, you know, that maybe because something bothering him, you know, but why are you always sort of fighting with me? You're always emotional. And you can say, maybe you were right. I was too emotional. I'm working on it. So, you know, no need to get defensive on it, on it that, you, you know, as a woman, we, we, we get emotional. But I forgive myself. So let's just move on. And yeah, I try my best not to get too emotional with you anymore. Okay? This is from Maria. Ed, my question is, how do you change the perception of your ex when he broke up with you for being too much in your masculine, being demanding and pushy, especially if he reaches out to you by message? And it was a long-distance relationship. If you lean back, how can you prove him you are doing the work and changing your ways? Thanks. Doing nothing is proving, is proving it to him that you are different than your, you know, your old self like two weeks ago, for example. Right? So you, from pushy and bossy to doing nothing, that is the change that he could sense, that he could feel, that he could see. That is enough. You don't have to prove yourself. You don't have to convince him. You don't have to tell him, hey, look, I'm not crazy anymore. <laughs> that doesn't work that way, okay? So you, you already lean back. You know, you, he doesn't hear a peep from you. He doesn't hear you complain. He doesn't hear you being pushy. That's how he sees that you have changed. That's how you do it with a guy, not with words, okay, with your energy, with the shift in your energy. Okay. So, does that answer your question, Maria? This is from Manisha. How do you deal with your boyfriend when he gets upset, defensive, or rude when you bring up an issue? What is the best way to deal with it? Anisha, have, how long have you been following me? How often do you bring issues? This is why most of you really need module one, journey in work. Do the inner work. When you do the inner work, you won't bring so many issues. Okay? Many of you end up in my page, in my groups, because you are so issue-minded, so issue-oriented. 
you know, every little thing upsets you. Every little thing uh, ruffles you. You know, and of course, that sounds like you make him wrong all the time. Nobody wants to be feel to be made to feel wrong all the time. And of course, he's going to be defensive. Okay, so work on you first. Sign up for Journey Inward. Then you will pick your battles. You're only gonna bring issues when it's they are really important to you. When they are your deal breakers. So when it is your deal breaker, how do you bring it up? Well, you just say, say it as it is. With me, it's just very simple. Just be, di be direct about it, you know, but he will pick it from your tone, not so much on how you say it, right? But he will pick from your tone. If you speak in a sort of laid back manners, you know, hey, hon, I just want to say something, you know, um, something that you did like this morning, I, I, you know, I really f don't feel good about it. You know, yeah, yeah. Just say it sort of in a very matter of fact, but also non dramatic way. That's, that's, you know, that's what a guy needs to hear. Okay. And if you are the sort who keeps your mouth zip most of the time, he will listen to you. Like Joey, you know, he, he always listens to me. You know, sometimes I get mad even with, with him, you know, but I'll be mad for like a few seconds, you know, at the most. And then, you know, I will remove myself. And if he gets defensive, so be it. It's in the moment. Surrender to the moment, whatever it is. In the moment, you two are feeling defensive. Surrender to it. Be okay with it. Okay. So um, this is how you feel. So the non-acceptance of that is going to cause more complication. But if you just accept that as a couple in any relationship, you're going to argue sometimes. It doesn't have to be, you know, like um, Second World War, but you're going to argue. You're going to be snippy with each other. You're going to snap at each other every now and then. But you accept that is just part of a relationship, part of coupledom, right? So if he's defensive and you're feeling also defensive, then stop talking and just leave the vicinity. Remove yourself from the situation. Go somewhere else. If you don't want to deal with his anger, just go somewhere else. That's what I do, okay? If he's defensive and it makes me want to scream, you know, at, at him even more, I would just walk somewhere. I would just say, I don't want to talk to you for the rest of the day. And I'll just bolt to, to the bedroom. And then, you know, half an hour later, he would come to me and smiling and, and start talking again. And we start talking about different subjects again. So we are, that's how we solve problems. We never have any real problem. You know, the, the, the problem will be in the moment we, we lose our, temp, our cool or our temper. But an hour or so later, we already move on to something else. We already open a new chapter. This is what I mean by emptying the content of consciousness moment to moment. You always die to the past moment to moment. You don't accumulate. Watch my video on not accumulating um, by dying to the past emptying the content of con your consciousness by not fixing okay it's all free check it on my wall i give you free advice all the time nobody else gives free advice the way i do all right advice that actually works as well not just free, ad free advice that doesn't work duh who needs it right so it's very simple and because you don't carry this trace of trauma and anger, resentment, you know, imprinted in your consciousness. So you always press moment to moment because you always surrender to a new chapter every breath you take. That is the one skill that will change your life forever, forever. I'm, I promise you, I'm living it. So that's why I can teach you all this. When you are neurosis free, you cannot be 
not successful in any endeavor in your life, either uh, romantic or, you know, career-wise as well, job-wise or business. That's why I also invite you ladies to sign up for my new brand new brand new program, My Touch. It is very uh, mind blowing. I think, well, I guess if I said myself, you know, I'm I'm, I'm bragging, right? <laughs> I hope anyway. We only uh, have done three classes uh, so far, so we we'll see what the, the partic participants say at the end of the program. But please sign up because we only have very few people participating in the program. So I will have more time to help you one-on-one, -on -one, you know, building your uh, projects or your, your business or your passion. I'm going to share all the insights that I've learned building my own empire um, from nothing, from zero to where I am today, being financially and, uh, and geographically independent. So I can be working anywhere from uh, any time, you know, drop, uh, I can drop anything at, at, the, at the sort of moment notice and fly anywhere in the world and still making money and still working and also enjoying it at the same time, you know, happy about it at the same time. It's, it's priceless, ladies. So, life is short, you know, make the, make the best of it. So I'm teaching you all these skills that probably you wouldn't hear anywhere else because a lot of business coaching out there is very technical. It's just about how to uh, have a mailing list, to create an email sequence of, of your mailing list. You know, I'm telling you, my mailing list is very small. You know, um, for the the first seven years, it's it's below five thousand <laughs> mailing list. Doesn't matter, and it's not perfect. I don't attend to it very often, but I still make a, a very nice living. Uh, you know, out of um, uh, everything else, because I really give results. You know, your clients only worry about one thing, results. They don't worry about your mailing list, the number of your mailing list. They don't worry about your pictures. I never took uh, professional pictures, the last, you know, in, in my career as a dating coach. Uh, my pictures are old. It's not about that. And I've only done video the last year. You know, my, res you know, uh, my results are pure... Ba purely based on the efficacies of my advice or my products and services because it's unique because it's unavailable anywhere else people just have to come to you in the end because they don't find that the same results anywhere else so you become irreplaceable you become significant okay the great Oprah said don't aim for success but be significant. That's what I am. I am significant. I'm irreplaceable. That's why, you know, I have the upper hand, so to speak. Not that I want, I want to use it to, you know, in a, in a sinister way to abuse you or anything like that, right? So that's what I'm going to teach you in my touch. How to be significant in your field, in your niche. All right? So this is getting late, and I'm, I'm going to have to go to bed soon. But let me answer a few more questions. This is from Lisa. Could you explain your interpretation of alpha versus beta? I'm sure you'll use your discretion as to whether this is an appropriate topic. I respect you. Thank you, Lisa. Well, you are an alpha woman, as you well know, right, Lisa? Because you've been chasing and chasing, chasing your EUM, sending him 20 emails, 20 unanswered emails and all that. I'm not quite sure that he's better. Because if he's better, probably, you know, he will respond to you. He's just, he's checking out because you're too aggressive. You're too pushy. 
you're, you, you know, you are colliding with his masculine energy. So he cannot show you his masculine side because you're ma more masculine than, than him. Sorry to say that, but it is what it is. But if you become more laid back, more become like the woman in the relationship, then he has to step up because two feminine energies are not going to work in the relationship either. Two masculine energies will, will collide. Two feminine energies will drift apart. So it's just science that in every relationship, either gay relationship or heterosexual relationship, there needs to be one masculine energy and one feminine energy to create this magnetic bond, the yin and yang, the magnetic bond. Okay, if it's both feminine energies, then it's just like this. And if it's both masculine energies, that will be like this. But if it's one masculine and one feminine, it will be like this. Do you understand? So, a guy, who, who most guys, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say they're the alpha, alpha, like alpha, alpha meaning like really, really like uh, the very successful type, you know, the leader type. I know you wouldn't like it when I say that Donald Trump, for example, is an example of alpha guys because, you know, he's all about achievement, about getting things done. And I know some of you will protest when I say that, but because you, you have, you know, unresolved issues around Donald Trump, which is <laughs> not the subject that I, I, I want to, you know, I want to discuss at this class. But that is an example of alpha. Beta is, you know, a guy who, who is probably more in touch with his feminine side, an artist type, right? Uh, and usually the more spiritual a guy is, uh, the more he will be in touch with his feminine side. For example, Osho, you know, uh, uh, one of the mystics, he he's deceased now. He 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 he's dead, but he is a a type of a guy who is now because he was an awakened being. He is very feminine. He was very in touch with his feminine side because all he he ever did was just to just be. You know, he no longer has a drive. You know, to to achieve anything, to attain anything. So. He just be. He he's the epitome, I think, of a feminine energy, spiritual guy. So the more like a new age a guy is, usually also the more better or the more in touch he is with his feminine energy. But in your case, I don't think he is better. You are just the alpha one, too alpha, too masculine but you are not under my care, it will change over time, okay? I know it's not going to be overnight, but I see changes in you already. All right, ladies, I know you, you're asking me questions here, but I cannot even, let's see the comments here. Um, let's see what questions do we have here. I cannot see any question. I know you are, you've been asking questions, but when you're doing live, it's very difficult to navigate who's asking what, uh, unless you do it um, at the spot. So I guess since it's like already 1.08 a.m., ladies, ladies, I think I'm just going to um, end it here. But... I'll have another live class probably somewhere in, oh, I'll be in Bali. So let's have a, a class in Bali. Um, thank you so much for being here. And please like and share it, you know, with your loved ones, because I believe, or at least I hope, whatever I teach today, whatever I speak to you today, uh, can help so many people, okay? So let's heal the world, one woman, at a time that is my mission in life or this is from connie what if they make it seem like they put it all the effort and then you don't really contact them and such 
is it okay to do the things they ask for then or try a little, a little if say they ask for good morning text and that sort of thing you can experiment but you know guys always say oh call me <laughs> then you call them and then they never answer right so to be safe really just lean back if they say oh call me text me this and that okay just say okay you know but in the end of the day if he really wants to talk to you he knows how to reach you and don't don't make excuses for guys okay that he cannot pick up the phone guys have gone to war me towards millions of times and kills killed millions of people he can pick up the phone and call you so don't make excuses all right ladies it's late have a great Sunday wherever you are in the world or, or good night if you are in the East or in Asia um, I'll see you again in a week or in a few weeks bye bye